Alright, so um, I thought I'd make a video. Hopefully this will help somebody out or come in handy, but I just wanted to show the differences between uh, genuine lead-based white oil paint versus the non-toxic substitutions, which usually have titanium and zinc and some combination. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate that here. I've, I'm not going to go into details about toxicity and things like that or the archival benefits of lead. Um, I figure you probably, there's plenty of good videos that go over that stuff. I just want to demonstrate how it affects color uh, as a tint or how it mixes. Uh, this is, in my opinion, where lead paint is really good, where it really shines. Um, not the only benefit, but what the reason I really like it is because you can lighten a color without cooling it down so much. Uh, you know, lead, um, excuse me, titanium and zinc, those are very cool whites typically, so they tend to sort of make colors a little bit chalkier, a little bit cooler. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to do a little demonstration here and just show you uh, the differences between these. Let me show you what I've got. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have like 15 different paints to choose from, but I think I've got enough here to kind of show you. Um, hopefully this will show up on camera and be able to see the difference. Um, the lead-based white that I have is this Blue Ridge Cremnitz white. So Cremnitz is typically nothing but PW1, uh, lead carbonate, as the, as the only pigment. And he makes this with uh, walnut and safflower oil. This is about, I think about 18 bucks a tube, which is cheap for Cremnitz. That's a lot more than titanium, but it's for Cremnitz white, it's really cheap. In fact, Blue Ridge is probably, um, that's like the best value in oil paint, in my opinion. I uh, highly recommend his stuff. Uh, 40 milliliter tube for about 18 bucks. Uh, the first of the alternatives that I have here is this Michael Harding Warm White. Um, this is made actually only of titanium and a tiny bit of yellow ochre. So you can see how it's a little bit, hopefully that shows up, you can see that sample is a little bit, kind of got a beige off-white quality to it. And he grinds this in linseed oil, so this would be a really good foundation white, kind of a fast dryer. Uh, and this is maybe about 10 or 11 bucks for a 40 milliliter tube. And then I've got uh, Windsor & Newton Flake White Hue. This is just titanium and zinc in safflower oil. Uh, most titanium whites are titanium and zinc in safflower oil. I'm not sure what they do to this, what they add to it to make it different than just regular titanium white. But it's good stuff. I'm almost out. This is a little bit cheaper. This is probably about eight, eight or nine dollars a tube. And then I've got, just for fun, an old tube of permalba white. That's what they call it. Um, really, it's titanium white. They call it permalba white. This is a titanium and zinc, again, in safflower oil. Um, I just figured I'd put this up here just to have something that's not trying to be lead white, just to have a comparison there. Um, you got to hand it to permalba. If you ever do any research on yellowing, this is always the paint that kind of wins those uh, contests as far as paints that stay white over the years. I'm not sure what they add to it. It's very blue uh, in mass tone. It's Hopefully you can see the difference there. It's got a little bit of a, of a coolness to it. Um, so let's talk about what we're going to do. I'm just going to mix each one of these with alizarin crimson. I've got some genuine PR83 alizarin crimson here. And to me, this is a really good... Um, kind of a test for mixing because alizarin crimson is a cool red but it's not purple I mean it's cooler than say cad red light let me show you this sample that I've got here whoops bump my camera it's almost got like a rusty quality to it it's almost like a blood red um, so I want to see if I can lighten this without turning it purple or lilac so let's see what I've got. And I'm just going to mix with a palette knife here. This is just an, a, a scrap piece of uh, gessoed canvas here. Um, so let me start with the Blue Ridge, the Cremnitz, and see what this does. So already I can see that it's, it's lightening it, but it's maintaining that kind of, that sort of warmth, that almost like, like I said, kind of almost like a rusty color. Uh, if you've ever used uh, alizarin permanent or permanent alizarin, whatever the brand might call it, those are usually a lot more violet than genuine alizarin. There we go. So this is why, you know, real alizarin crimson and flake white 
or Kremnitz white, any kind of lead white, are kind of like staples for uh, portrait painters and figure painters because they're you really don't lose that warmth. And I'm just going to kind of rub it across this this line right there. You can see that it's pretty transparent. Um, Kremnitz white is not very opaque, um, and that's also good for painting flesh because you know flesh is not um, you know it's got sort of a luminous quality. You you wouldn't want it to be too opaque. So there we go. That's that's the Kremnitz white and crimson. Now let's do a comparison. To next up is the Michael Harding warm white. Remember this is titanium and yellow ochre put together. Let's see what that does. So it's very strong even though it's Uh, it's got the yellow ochre in it. It's still, to my eyes, really cooling down that um, that alizarin. You can see if you put those together, hopefully that's showing up on camera, but this has got a lot more of that sort of blood red undertone. This is a little bit kind of going towards like a lilac almost. Add a little bit more. And that's that's interesting considering that it's got the, the yellow ochre added, added to it since that's the complement of violet. Um, but that's still pushing it kind of into the purpley pinks. Now, some people would say, oh yeah, well that's just because titanium is stronger. If you just don't use as much, it's really not any different. So let's try that. Let me put a little bit more alizarin and see if I can match the value and just see what the color does. So adding more of that in, I'll tell you what, I'll just put that right alongside it. So if we look at the differences there, again, I'm still way on the purple side here, more on the on the deeper red here with the lead. I'll go even more with the alizarin. <clears throat> Let's see how dark I can get this. I'm having to fight that titanium. I keep going back into the alizarin. So that's pretty close. It's still very... Hopefully you can see the difference there. This is still a little bit on the purple side compared to this. And if I go over the black line, it's not quite as as transparent as the real lead. So, let's see. All right, let's try the Windsor & Newton flake white hue. Remember this is just zinc and titanium and something else, something that makes it different than regular uh, titanium white. I'm not really sure what they use. So this one definitely is weaker than the Michael Harding. Um, I put a pretty big glob in there and it didn't, didn't shift it up too much. I think that's because of the zinc. It makes it a little less overpowering. Um, so we put those together. This matches the Michael Harding pretty close to my eye. It's close, you know, it's, it's getting there. Still looks a little bit more purple to me. Put a little dash of it right there. Just hopefully you can see the difference between those two. Um, not like huge difference, but there is a difference. And I'll do the same thing and kind of try to tone this down with more alizarin and just see what happens. Yeah, that matches it pretty good. It's pretty close. Let's try the transparency. I'll just do yeah that's that matches the the blue ridge a little bit better. It's just having that zinc really prevents it from being as cool as the Michael Harding, even though the Michael Harding's got the ochre in it, it's still uh, it's very just having straight titanium really overpowers that that zinc uh, that mixture. All right, so let's try the permalba see the difference here. By the way, this Permalba is really, I've had it for several years, and if you've ever used this brand, you know they use these really crappy plastic tubes that don't really seal up all the way, and uh, the result is you get a really like stringy, I mean this is almost like taffy, if you can see these like strings hanging off of this. A lot of people will say, yeah, lead white is really good because it gives you a nice ropey, kind of stringy mark. Uh, and sometimes that's true, but to me that 
usually just comes down to the manufacturer, like how they make it. Because um, sometimes lead paint's very soft and smooth. Sometimes, you know, other pigments also have that ropiness, just like this. Um, but anyway, that's kind of interesting. Let's see what this looks like. This is pretty stiff. Again, it's like halfway dried out. Whoops, I'm shaking my camera trying to mix this. Permalba is not bad. It's 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 a good good value. Usually, can, you can buy those really big tubes for less than twenty bucks. And I think it's sort of known to be not quite as opaque as most titaniums. I think it's like I said earlier. I think it has a little bit more of an abundance of zinc in the mixture, so it's a little bit cooler, a little bit less chalky. Um, and to me, it's. It's close. It's hard to say. I mean, I think that's probably the coolest of the bunch. I don't know. Between that and the Michael Harding, it's it's hard to say. So all I'm really looking at here is just the tinting characteristics. What? How is it shifting? Are these shifting cool or warm? Um, to me, I think, you know, as far as the colors staying warm, you, you can't beat lead white. But the second place I would probably give to the Windsor & Newton flake white hue. Uh, that's pretty close. We're Again, we're maintaining that, that really rich, um, deep, almost brownish red quality that you can kind of see in alizarin somewhat, like I showed earlier. It's not shifting it too purple. Uh, Blue Ridge is my favorite. Um, I like to keep titanium on hand for painting like blue skies, things like that. Things where I'm not really um, that concerned about a warm, luminous, uh, luminosity kind of showing through. But you can probably see, you can understand how portrait painters and figure painters really swear by a good crim that's white. So um, hopefully this is sh uh, showing up well. I don't make videos often, so I don't really know how clear this is going to be on screen. But that just kind of shows you sort of the difference, you know, what lead does in a mixture. So uh, hopefully this this helps you out somewhat. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it down there below and I'll do my best to answer. All right. Bye-bye.